Russia's vast stocks of Soviet-era weapons are running out due to war in Ukraine. The Russian Federation might feel the scarcity of equipment it inherited from the USSR next year. That's according to The Economist, although the International Institute for Strategic Studies estimated that in February of this year, Russia may have had about 3,200 tanks in storage to draw on. Up to 70% of them have not moved an inch since the beginning of the war. A large proportion of the T-72s have been stored uncovered since the early 1990s and are probably in very poor condition, the article reads, citing the IISS experts. They have reached a conclusion that Russian tank and infantry vehicle refurbishment from storage is expected to hit a critical point of exhaustion by the second half of 2025. Ironically, many Soviet weapons and components are in Ukraine and Kharkiv was the main producer of turrets for T-72 tanks. Additionally, it is suggested that Russia lacks workers who can maintain the necessary production. Most intelligence sources report that in the two years of war, Russia had lost about 3,000 tanks and 5,000 other armored vehicles. For example, Dutch Oryx has either photo or video evidence of 3,235 tanks destroyed, but adds that the actual number is likely significantly higher. Alexander Goltz, an analyst at the Stockholm Center for Eastern European Studies, says Vladimir Putin has the old Politburo to thank for the huge stockpiles of weapons built up during the Cold War. He says Soviet leaders knew that Western military kit was much more advanced than their own, so they opted for mass, churning out thousands of armored vehicles in peacetime in case of war. Before its demise, says Goltz, the Soviet Union had as many armored vehicles as the rest of the world put together. When the then Russian defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, boasted in December last year that 1,530 tanks had been delivered in the course of the year, he omitted to say that almost 85% of them, according to an assessment by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, a London think tank, were not new tanks, but old ones, mainly T-72s, old T-62s, and even some T-55s dating from just after the Second World War. That had been taken out of storage and given a wash and brush up. Since the invasion, about 175 reasonably modern T-90M tanks have been sent to the front line. Annual production this year could be approaching 90. U.S. allowed Ukraine to launch new strikes on Russian territory, Russians are afraid. Washington has given the Ukrainian president carte blanche to launch new strikes on Russian territory using Western weapons systems. About this, in an interview with the agency TASS, said the head of the second department of the CIS countries of the Russian Foreign Ministry, Alexei Polishchuk. According to him, the United States has not yet abandoned its obsession with inflicting a strategic defeat on Russia. The spiral of escalation continues in Washington. They are trying to justify their own crimes and protect Kiev. Moreover, the Zelensky regime is given carte blanche to inflict US weapons RMB-1, new attacks on Russian territory, the diplomat emphasized. He added that the United States continues to dream of illusions of its own superiority. Few in the American elite are aware of the risks of such self-deception implicated in arrogance and underestimation of the enemy. The consequences may be unpredictable both for the United States and for the whole world, reminded Alexei Polishchuk. After many months on the back foot because of ammunition and manpower shortages, Kiev is finally able to take full advantage of Western military aid that started to flow into the country last month after months of delays. Soldiers on the front line say the deliveries are beginning to make a difference, especially since they can now use the arsenal to strike across the border at certain military targets supporting Russia's offensive in Ukraine. Recall part of the northern Kharkiv region, including the cities of Izium, Kupiansk and Balaklia, fell into Russian hands soon after Moscow launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. The occupation was brutal. When the area was liberated in the fall of 2022, Ukrainian troops found evidence of what they say were war crimes committed by Russian forces, including multiple mass graves and torture chambers.
In May this year, Russia launched another cross-border attack on the region, trying to exploit Ukraine's ammunition shortages before the expected arrival of the first Western weapons. It triggered a change in the position of our Western partners. It encouraged them to, at least partially, remove the restrictions on the use of the Western weapons. According to Ukrainian defense authorities, these included a regiment command post in the Belgorod region, an ammunition depot in Voronezh, a drone facility and an airfield in Krasnodar, communication centers in Bryansk, and several naval sites in occupied Crimea. The arrival of long-range ATA CMS missile systems was a particular game-changer.